I'm on a mission to teach people how to use hyperbaric therapy safely and effectively so they can improve health, feel better, live longer, and ultimately be happier. However, there are times where I would advise against using hyperbaric therapy, or I would strongly suggest that uh, people proceed with caution. And I want to talk about these situations today. They're really important, especially for the safety of hyperbaric therapy. First, let's look at COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and emphysema. It's a condition when people have difficulty breathing. Difficulty breathing by definition means that these people will experience hypoxia. So hypoxia makes us think hyperbaric oxygen therapy will help to improve hypoxia, correct? Well, it's correct, but we need to look at what stage of emphysema and COPD these people are at. In initial stages or even moderate stages, hyperbaric therapy can be quite beneficial. It will improve hypoxia. It will deliver much needed oxygen to cells and tissues. However, when we get to more severe stages of COPD, patient might experience something that is called carbon dioxide retention. So basically, when a person cannot fully expire the air that they're breathing, some of that air becomes trapped in the lungs. And this is air with carbon dioxide, right? Because we're trying to expire it. So that makes us retain carbon dioxide. And it could be dangerous if you do hyperbaric oxygen therapy. If a person has emphysema or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, it, I suggest that they consult pulmonologist, hyperbaric oxygen practitioner to see if they could be safely using hyperbaric therapy to improve their health. Another condition that we need to be careful with is congestive heart failure when ejection fraction is less than 25%. Normal ejection fraction is between 55% and 70%. An ejection fraction measures the amount of blood that heart can eject. So when that is not the right amount, when it's significantly lower than normal, hyperbaric therapy can be dangerous. And um, again, my suggestion, my advice is to consult cardiologist, hyperbaric oxygen practitioner to see where you at and if hyperbaric therapy could be one of the therapies that you can use safely to improve your health. Another condition that we need to be careful is high fever. In high fever, I mean 39 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 102.2 Fahrenheit and higher. The reason we wanna exercise caution in somebody with high fever is that fever predisposes us to febrile seizures, especially high fever. And um, again, it, because of the febrile seizures can predispose us to oxygen toxicity situation. It's not an absolute contraindication. It doesn't mean that at but under no circumstance we can treat a person with high fever. We can, and we did it successfully during COVID pandemic when people with high fever and COVID were treated in hyperbaric chambers and their lives were saved through that treatment. However, we need to be carefully monitoring that patient um, at every point of their hyperbaric experience. Another condition, yet another condition that we need to be careful with is ear inflammation or sinus inflammation. And the reason these two conditions might be a relative contraindication to a hyperbaric treatment is that with pressure change and those cavities being inflamed, person might experience a lot of pain and they would have difficulty equalizing pressure in their ears or in their sinuses, which is not a good thing because it predisposes us to bar trauma, trauma of the ear. Example could be ruptured tympanic membrane. Somebody has inflamed ears and 
hyperbaric is not a life-saving measure for them. I suggest that they go home, they use some home remedies um, if they can, because I'm always for natural therapies to bring down inflammation in the ear and in the sinuses. They might want to look at allergens. Anyways, they need to have that treated first and then come for their hyperbaric session. Again, if it's not a life-threatening situation, such as uh, arterial gas embolism or maybe decompression sickness, then we would use medications to help that person go through hyperbaric experience. One more condition that we think of when we think about relative contraindications to hyperbaric therapy is congenital spherocytosis and sickle cell anemia. These are two conditions when the red blood cells are shaped abnormally. When we subject those red blood cells, when we put them under pressure in a pressurized environment in a hyperbaric chamber, we might stimulate hemolysis when they would just burst inside. Having said that, in literature, we see many examples of people both with sickle cell anemia and congenital spherocytosis treated in hyperbaric chambers. They've received hyperbaric treatments for something else that they might had in hyperbaric was an indication and they did absolutely well. Suggestion, talk to your hematologist, talk to your hyperbaric practitioner, get clearance for hyperbaric treatment and then you can enjoy your treatments knowing that somebody who is knowledgeable has looked at your situation in detail and cleared you for hyperbaric treatments. So these are the main relative contraindications to hyperbaric therapy. There are a couple of more. There are some medications that might be contraindicated to use with hyperbaric therapy, but these are the main ones. Now we're moving to two absolute contraindications. Absolute means that under no circumstance, although there will be a small exception to that rule, you will see now a person with that condition should be treated in a hyperbaric chamber. One is untreated pneumothorax. Untreated pneumothorax is a condition when a person has a collapsed lung. Now, if it's a tension pneumothorax, then a person would probably know that they have one because of the sharp stabbing pain, difficulty breathing, maybe they fell, that's how they developed pneumothorax. But other people might be walking around with some mild pneumothorax and not even knowing about it because maybe they had an infection that caused pneumothorax, maybe they had pneumothorax in the past, that's another red flag that we need to pay attention to. And the reason we're not treating somebody with pneumothorax is that that situation under hyperbaric conditions could lead to tension pneumothorax, which is potentially a life-threatening condition. And the last absolute contraindication, and you'd be surprised here, is inability to equalize pressure in the ears. How simple is that? Well, first of all, and I hear it over and over again, people go to a hyperbaric facility and they do their first hyperbaric treatment and they're not being instructed on how to equalize pressure in the ears. Yet, it is super important to do that on pressurization to avoid possibility of bar trauma that can happen if we don't do that. There are three main equalization techniques that we can use and um, I have a great video on that and they, we must use, we should use if we go into hyperbaric chamber. And equalizing pressure in the ears with a maneuver like that when you close your nose and you breathe into your nose would normally open your ears and pressure will be equalized and this will help us avoid bar trauma on pressurization. If we're talking about diving, it's when we descend, when we go down. It's important to do that. Before somebody starts their hyperbaric experience, 
they need to try those techniques. They need to see whether or not they can do it easily. Some people need to yawn, some people need to close their nose, some people need to swallow to equalize their ears. And normally most of the people can do this easily, but it's better to practice before you go into hyperbaric chamber. Then when you go in and the pressure starts to go up, you need to start equalizing pressure in your ears. This is a must. Many people don't do that. And in good case scenario, they'll have a popping sensation in their ears after their hyperbaric experience. So they feel like there's pressure in their ears still that they can't release. In a bad case scenario, these people can have borrowed trauma. We covered relative contraindications to hyperbaric therapy and absolute contraindications to hyperbaric therapy. These are conditions that tell us that potentially it's a no to hyperbaric therapy. Some of them are treatable, such as high fever, when if we bring fever down, person can use a hyperbaric chamber. And some conditions, such as pneumothorax, means that first it needs to resolve, then a person can use a hyperbaric chamber. And in the cases of um, ejection fraction less than 25% and end stages, severe stages of COPD and emphysema, most likely we'd need to look for a different therapy to help that person. It wouldn't be hyperbaric therapy. I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe to our newsletter to get all the information about hyperbaric oxygen therapy, how to use it safely and effectively. Don't forget to give us likes and subscribe to our channel.